So, yeah. today's plan was to get up around 5.45. Still get out there. <sighs> Pre-dawn, sort of. Meet them for breakfast, kind of hardcore hunter stuff. It's 7:20. We're just starting to get up. So we're thinking strategies for the day for hunting, and it includes uh, laundry and. Uh, taking care of some administrative things around here in the morning and maybe getting out this afternoon and uh, glassing but we got to rethink our strategy I think hearing about those bulls those eight bulls those guys got into yesterday's worked itself into our heads uh, and uh, we don't know the area that well. Maybe, I don't know if there's another spot. Well, there's only one road that goes up there. Do you think that's where those guys were? There's no clue. I don't There's no tell. I don't know. Uh, it's just a matter of class. You've got to be a little bit more mobile, I think. You've got to be able to take the spotting scope with us this time and glass areas um, thoroughly and rule out that they're there. Move to a new area. Alright. We'll, you know, let's, let's do it. So we're packing up. About 99% packed to go out for the afternoon. We're both inside the trailer. And I look out this window at my rock sitting right there. And there's this like little Pomeranian dog just walking up to the camp. And I'm like, hey, look, look, look. Check it out, check it out. And Rustin turns, turns his head just in time to see that little son of a bitch cock his leg on my <laughs> fucking rack rock to piss so we're both no 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 and rush throws the door open really quick the dog just he he runs off in and must live here he ran off into the community there <laughs> so almost had a little bit of extra scent for the hunt afternoon of day four we're back at our spot Literally just heard a gunshot way out there. So, we're learning. North facing slopes, heavy timber. Our spots to glass. We're going to be spending a lot of time today glassing, not walking around. But we're going to be moving from spot to spot after we fully glass area. Russ is down on the hillside right there. And we got a pretty good view all around us. So we finally spotted some elk. They are basically eight tenths of a mile away from us. Back up in those trees. They're moving this way, so we're going to go down there and see what happens. Unfortunately, it's also the main road in and out of here, so and there's a lot of ways those guys can go between now and then, but it's a good sign.
we saw them. They were going this way. So we're hoping they're coming down here. Only time will tell. Well, we have a good plan based on something we saw. John spotted movement up on a ridge line across the canyon we were glassing. And we put the spotting scope on it. It was a couple of elk and some deer. And they were moving to our right down into a canyon that we're overlooking right now. But they have only got about 20 minutes of shooting light left. And we never actually did see them up into the canyon. They were just going that direction. And we had to get moving to get in position if they did come down here. So I guess we got 20 minutes. We'll see. How you doing? I'm cold. Yeah. Hey. Well. Try again tomorrow. Yeah. Here's a truck. Here's our our valley and our elk. We'll let them stay cold up in the mountains tonight. We could have brought him home and warmed him up, but he didn't want to come. Maybe tomorrow. Let's we get the pile. Let's get the pile of, uh, we didn't, uh, we couldn't video it while we were doing it because we were both kind of hands busy. But uh, there's all of our meat. From the mule deer. Yeah, from the mule deer. We haven't, we don't, our elk's still up in the uh, mountain staying cold. That's oh, just the carcass. Here's our pile of uh, hamburger slash stew meat. That's rib meat and uh, just pieces of meat from the carcass. But uh, yeah, still think there's about 100 pounds there. No way. Well, all right. All right, so what are we doing, Russ? Good. No, what are we doing? Oh, uh, we are grilling some... Uh mule deer backstrap with salt and pepper and butter. Oh, that's backstrap? I thought there was tenderloin. No, I mean tenderloin, oh, Okay. Sorry. And we got some green beans. Green beans. Nice and far. This is, some, um, this is just some raw venison we'll probably put on the grill so we can see what it tastes like raw without, or not raw, but without any salt and pepper. Oh, right on, right on. All righty. So, a little whiskey. Mm -hmm. We got to get up early in the morning. We've we failed. We failed in like the last two days of getting up early. Hold on, let me pause this. We'll start it again. I start all my damn videos with "all right," and I hate it. I need to stop that. So, fourth day of hunting. Kind of a celebratory evening because we're cooking some deer that we shot. And uh, we saw some elk that we've been hunting for the last four days. Yes. That was not scripted. That was like, we, you know, we practiced this for hours. That's all I had to say. It's cold, but it's not cold. And alcohol is not as much of a factor into that comment as you might think. We do that far. Russ is getting a call or where his timer's going off. So the cold weather gear that I've brought and I think Russ has brought as well has done its job. It is on average in the teens and less out here, especially where we're hunting. Um, Russ's truck has said negative six more than once. And... Um, you know, but we're comfortable except in the afternoons slash evenings when we're sitting static, um, trying to wait for something. That's when our feet and our hands get brutally cold. Outside of that, you know, um, it's working. The cold weather gear does its job. So um, we're both pretty satisfied with that, I think. So that makes the hunting you know, the, the prospect of coming back uh, into a cold weather environment like this a lot easier for me because 
I'm used to temperatures 100 degrees warmer than what I'm in right now, but it's not bad. All right, Russ just grilled the tenderloin. He's already mm. tore into it and says it's delicious. This will be my first taste. It's only se is it seasoned at all? Salt, and, salt pepper? and pepper and butter. All right, salt and pepper and butter. Some uh, tenderloin. Mule deer tenderloin from Montana. 8,000. Oh my foot God. Number. Pretty good. Wow. <laughs> I'll say it's a little tough, but it's a gamey toughness. Tough. Yeah. I'll say that. I mean, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I really don't. The flavor is phenomenal. There's a slight, the slightest gaminess to it, but, oh man, I'm going to turn this off and then dig in because this is good. Oh man. It's Tuesday, it's 6.24 in the morning. It's brutally cold and we're pretty tired. And we just had a discussion about how the fun meters are pegged. But if we want to elk, we gotta get going. So we're gonna get dressed and get out there. All right, I think it's a little after seven. Uh, Russ remote started the truck, and apparently I left my window down, so uh, the inside's a little frosty. <laughs> Anyways, uh, other hunters have already pulled out, or pulling out. I heard them leaving, rustling around this morning. And again, it's cold, but it's not unbearably so. We're transferring the, the deer from the back of the truck into that $300 cooler rust spot yesterday. Another thing that the uh, guy next door just talked to us about, I mentioned how the, it's cold, but it's not so brutally cold that it's unbearable, is that it's a dry cold. And I've really never heard that. I've heard dry heat and all that stuff. But yeah, I mean, if it was rainy or humid up we here. Been gone yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I definitely don't think that the... Uh, the motivation would uh, be as far along as it uh, has been. But so 7:25, sunrise is happening. Um, we're going. All right, we're driving in, and we've seen two groups of muleys. One of them we're backing up on right now to get a better view. He's down in, a, in our wash. There he is, right there. Big muley buck. Yep. This morning, I think the last 30 minutes. He's not that big. He's actually pretty big deer. Uh, He's not as big as that other one. Hey, good eyeball. Don't know if you're seeing it in the video, but the, the sun glinting off of the frost on these bushes is pretty neat looking. spot we have not hunted yet. Looks about as promising as all the other places. We're gonna walk back in, try to get up on a ridge, glass down, 
There's at least one other guy out here. His truck is parked next to ours. And we passed two camps. Ah, one guy looked like he was dressing out or something. Couldn't tell if it was elk or deer. So. We're at the final stretch of what's become a marathon. It started as a sprint. We got elk coming right towards us. They were last seen right there in those trees. We don't know if they came to the right down towards us or to the left and away from us. They could be in these trees. Here. Goes around. Let's walk up and see if we can see him crossing. Yeah. Yeah. That was exciting. That was. That was fun. We're seeing what looks like fresh tracks in this road right here. There's no question. But we're both gassed. Those things are moving fast. We're gonna be heading back. Grab some lunch.
road that we're on. It's really icy. Russ busted his ass twice. I should videotape it more. It's pretty funny when he falls. There's another hunter down in that timber. He's been walking back and forth. Probably trying to flush him out of the beds. He's been walking back and forth there though. But yeah, he might be going back too. So we just walked out of the hunting spot. Oh my goodness, guy. The guy out here tent camping. It's two degrees outside. This guy's got some stuff over. Yeah. That's a Cabela's. I've seen yeah. one of those. That's one of those uh, four seasons Cabela's tents. Anyways, uh, we walked out of there and we met up with that other hunter that I, I think I got some video of earlier. Turned out to be a 70 year old man who hunts uh, this area. He's been hunting here for the last 15 years with his boys. Uh, him and his boy uh, went in there, what did he say this morning? At what time? I don't remember. Pre-dawn? I think he said it was pre-dawn when they went in there. and. Uh, Went back there about three or four miles, I guess, and they split up. He thinks his boy got one. He just came out of there. Uh, so, you know, traded a little bit of hunting tips and tricks. And gave we didn't some trade anything. He, <laughs> yeah. He just, uh, yeah, he provided us. Yeah. He, but, uh, you know, small world stuff. Started talking about uh, what he does around the, the winter times. He says he goes down south. And I said, whereabouts? He said, the Phoenix area. I said, I'm from Yuma. He goes, well, we go to Algodonas. <laughs> so, gave him my name, told him where I work, told him to look me up next time he comes down there. Small world. <clears throat> Antelope jumping across the uh, road in front of us. I, it looked like a break in the fence. I was looking for the same thing. There they all go. They're trucking. Yeah, they see you assholes later. We're not taking the chance of it not being antelope season. This trip held a lot of firsts. It was the first time my brother and I hunted a big game together. The first time I ever participated in an elk hunt. And hopefully it is the first hunt of what becomes an annual tradition that our kids can continue for generations to come. Montana certainly lives up to the name of Big Sky Country. The scenery was magnificent and lures you into its beauty in a way that only nature can do. But like many aspects of nature's beauty, if you don't appreciate the respect it commands from you, then danger awaits in many forms. The temperatures were routinely in the 20s. Snow was ever present, so the knowledge of operating in these frigid temps was required. We routinely removed layers of clothing to adapt. We are both from near sea level altitude regions and we were hunting above 7,000 feet. Fortunately, we are both in above average physical condition, so we met these challenges better than if we weren't. The weather and our own physical conditioning wasn't the only consideration. Grizzly bears also live in hunting grounds and we had to keep them in our minds as well. All those things considered, we felt confident in our preparation for the hunt. The adventure of the pursuit, the challenge of the Montana terrain, and the bonds of brotherhood made stronger through the whole experience were brought home with us along with the meat from that mule deer Russ shot on that first afternoon. So to wrap the video up, November of 2020 was the first time my brother and I hunted big game together. Lima, Montana, was the location and all in all it was an excellent trip we learned a lot we got a mule deer uh, saw some elk learned uh, some lessons about stalking elk and glassing elk and generally had a great adventure together and we look forward to doing it again next year with uh, one of his sons Andrew joining us we plan on taking video again so hopefully we'll have another video of the 2021 hunt in which we all have tags, hopefully, and 
one or all of this get out. So stay tuned for more videos on that.